love to see how the Lord orchestrates all the meetings together. Um, Sister Ada started out this morning with talking about us glorifying God in our much participation that will bring much fruit, and I've already seen this this morning. It goes along with my calling, and as Brother Jeff spoke about their ministry there in Africa, um, I saw how they are able to bring their bre- the brethren there together and how we all are one unit together and that we all participate together. So we can participate with them in their ministry as well as we pray and as we think upon them and uh, we're all in one spirit. This morning, I would like to, and this goes along with Brother Jeff's and Sister Sherry's, I would like to talk about contending for the faith, earnestly contending. And we spoke about this uh, in Jude and Uh, We think about this a lot, but the faith that we're speaking of is the faith that we have been given in Christ Jesus. We must earnestly contend to keep this faith. This is our faith that's been given to you. There's also a contending for the truth of the faith. So this is together. Um, This is something that the saints need to be ever mindful of, of our faith being kept pure and true. We must be on guard of being led away by teaching so we, in contending for the faith, we have to contend to keep the faith we have, and we have to content, make sure that the faith that we have, what we have the faith in, is Christ Jesus, mm-hmm. and that we are Amen. being taught the truth. So it's up to us to try the spirits and, and make sure that what we're hearing is the truth. And if you pray for understanding, the Lord will give you this. If you desire the truth, he will make sure you have it. Um, The good news is that Christ in us is greater than he that is in the world. I think sometimes that we think because we live in a time uh, uh, that there are so many that are, there's such a spiritual famine in the earth that that the ones that come to Christ, that that we're afraid they won't be able to make it. Well, Christ in us is greater than he that is in the world. So we can have faith that the Lord can keep those that are his. However, we do have to fight for this. Um, And I know you all know these things, but I think it's beneficial to have it stirred up in your pure minds. We must ever be on guard against the wicked one. Because the trial of our faith is meant for good. We know this in 1 Peter 1, 7, says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. And I thought, well, gold will perish, but our faith won't perish. Though it be tried with fire, this sounds like earnestly contending to me. If your faith is, if if the trial of your faith is tried with fire, you got to earnestly contend to to make it through that. Uh, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ Jesus. So, not only are we contending to keep our faith, but also that we might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So as we contend for this faith earnestly and we're victorious and we're overcomers, then we show that Christ is the victor, that he really did uh, conquer and defeat the wicked one. We don't, you know, we show that when you are in Christ, you really are an overcomer. So many uh, people believe that Christians really aren't, that they just say these things, but we really are overcomers in Christ. And it's amazing to me how many professed believers don't really understand this. So for calling us higher, I want to encourage you to earnestly contend for your faith, to keep your eye on the prize, and to think, is your faith worth earnestly contending for? Can you see the value of your faith, the treasure that you have been given? Can you really see this? Do you really see that if you don't fight, you won't win? As a matter of fact, if you decide not to contend, and Brother Given brought this up in the Jude lesson, that it will not be a good end for you. How those who were once saved, when they believed not, they were destroyed. This will be the end for those who do not contend for the faith. This is a sobering thought. We cannot say that we believe and then not contend for the faith. You can't say you believe and then just go about your merry way. You, it's actually a participation, as brother, I mean, as Sister Ada brought out this morning. You have to participate in this labor with the Lord. The kingdom does not work this way. There's no lazy saints in the kingdom. Amen. If you are not contending, it's my opinion that you are either slipping backwards or you're already fallen. So this is the way we can examine ourselves. Nehemiah, he knew how to contend. Nehemiah 13.25 says, And I contended with them 
and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked out their hair and made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. I would say that's some pretty earnest contending for what he believed. So he was serious about the things he believed. He was serious about the Lord. So my point to you, brethren, is there is much energy expended to earnestly contend for the faith. Uh, too many people are told that you just accept Christ into your life and you believe, and then you're going to have a happy life, and it's going to be easy going, and you have no more problems. No, it is worth everything that you put into it, but it requires your whole life. It requires your all. We know the scripture in Luke uh, 14, 28 through 23 that talks about counting the cost. It says, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost? Well, what about the brethren that's not being taught that there is a cost to be in the Lord? But that it's worth the cost, that it's very valuable. So it said, Unless happily after he had laid this foundation is not able to finish it, and all behold and begin to mock him. So, um, in the end of that scripture, it says, So, likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. It's not that the Lord won't let you be his disciple. You will not be able to be his disciple unless you forsake all that you have. The cost is all that you have. We do have to wrestle for the blessing. And they talked about the weightlifting thing. We have a wrestling to do in the Spirit. And we, we've talked about this too. You have to wrestle to receive the uh, blessing. And we even benefit from each other's wrestling. As we see one of the brethren wrestling to, to hold on to their faith, contending for the faith, it blesses us. And we gain things from this. Like Sister Ada brought out the different gifts in the body. We gain from each other's uh, things that we see going on in each other's lives. We are a body. That's right. So each body part is, helps the other body part. Amen. I was reminding, reminded of the building of the wall in Nehemiah's day. We must, as a body, contend for the faith. We must fight for our salvation as a body. And we have saw this more here in our assembly together, that it's a body thing. I mean, it's an individual thing, but it's a body. We must build one another up just as the brethren built the wall together. I don't think one of them could have done it by themselves. It took the whole body to accomplish the work. The scriptures, this uh, scripture says they were of a mind to work. And I, re- I love this passage of scripture in Nehemiah. <clears throat> to me, it depicts a lot of things about the saints. I see more and more as I, I uh, read it. So I'd like to read it to you real quick. Nehemiah four thirteen through 21. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places... I even set the people after their families and with their swords, their spears, and their bows. This reminds me of like the Hostetler brethren. Um, They got their spots in Africa working. We have different places here. So all the families are set and they're working. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren. Your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught. And we returned, all of us, to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the habergeons. And the rulers were behind all of the house of Judah, they which built it on the wall, and they which, that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought the work, the other held their weapon. Uh-huh. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. They were all together. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one, uh, one far from another. In that place thereof, ye hear the sound of the trumpet. Resort ye thither unto us. Our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work. And half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. So our brethren, we love one another. Uh, I'm thankful that we've been able to meet our brethren that are working in Africa, and we love them. And uh, 
we see that they are engaging in the work. And we know this. So let us contend together so we can help one another. If you're listening to this now, if you're in this room listening to it, or if you're listening on the live stream, or maybe later on one of the MP3s if you hear this, then and you feel like you're weak, let us help build you up. Draw close and draw near. It's Satan's aim to distract you. He wants you to think it's too hard to make it in the kingdom, that you're not able to uh, earnestly contend or to make it. And, you, and you know, when you feel this way, sometimes you just want to give up. I, I beseech you, contend. Don't exchange your soul for a meager per- portion that satisfies your desire for just this moment. Our God will strengthen you if you will only stretch forth your hand. Do you want to be healed? If you feel weak, do you really want to be strong? This is something to ask yourself, and I think we all have had these times in our lives when we feel like, well, I'm just not at the point or doing what I think I should in the Lord. Do you want to? Jesus asked this of of the man that had the infirmity for 38 years. He said, do you want to? So do you? If the answer is yes, then go to Jesus and ask him to help you. When he says... Pick up your bed and walk. You have to pick it up. This is earnestly contending for the faith. When he says, arise, you have to come to life. When he says, stretch forth your hand, you have to stretch it forth. The blessing of God far outweighs any kind of problems we can have in the flesh, any kind of things that can happen. And we have seen this as you contended for the faith. You've seen as you come through trials, after the trial there's a blessing. This is part of humbling ourselves before the Lord. We think about when Jacob wrestled, he got a, a limp. He got a, his hip out of joint. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your hip gets out of joint, mm-hmm. but you get the blessing. Yeah, it's better to enter heaven with a hip out of joint. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if we contend, then we'll be found in favor with God. We'll be among those on the final day that are willing and able to declare, this is our God who we have waited for. If you real, when you realize that you will get a blessing, then you will be more apt to contend. You can get your second win, so to speak. When you're weak, you know the Lord is for you. This makes you able. So in our meetings, we want to encourage each other. We want to build each other up to know that you are able. Each one is able. And just as Jacob wrestled all night, uh-huh. we have to wrestle all night. We're in the night now, really, if you think about it. But day is coming. And we won't have to wrestle anymore. Uh, and Jacob even, he was in tears and he was weary. But he continued and God funneled strength to him. We know that the blessing is the prize that we will receive, the inheritance from God. Um, and we are continually working towards this goal. And it's not a little tumble, it's a serious battle. You may be tempted, and I've already said this, to think that you don't have enough strength. But you do, brethren. The Lord is stronger than anything here. You just have to be able to access the strength from the Lord. Whatever you do, fight to get the blessing. Believe me, on Judgment Day, you will want to be uh, numbered among those that receive the blessing from from the Lord, not the wrath of God. So don't be among those that do not receive this. So I would like to uh, end with a scripture in Revelation 12, 10 and 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength Mm -hmm. and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. So now is come this power and strength. It's not later. It's now. You have this power and strength now, and you can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. So I beseech you, brethren, be overcomers. Do not neglect such a great salvation that has been made available unto you. Now, uh,